Welcome to the news for this week. We'll be covering recent MPOX emergency decoration and my thoughts on that before we can't even talk about it or they snub my video off of YouTube, but I want to get it on record here. VP Harris, her policy on price control and many other things she wants to do if she is president. It's election year. Duh. We are going to cover that. Robert Kiyosaki came out on Fox News Business and his thoughts on California going bust. We'll talk about some solutions on how we can reverse this. I mean, I'm hoping we can. Last but not least, y'all stay to the end. I'm going to put this on record talking about CBDC, Central Bank Digital Currency, the next monetary system brought to you by our government. Total control of civilization. Before we get started, like, share, and follow to help grow this channel and to help yourself stay up to date on new news. Hit that bell icon for weekly what the news and like culture speak videos. Appreciate y'all being here. Let the culture speak. I am so pissed. I was banned off of YouTube for about a week because of the whole covid thing but anyways i'm dan reporting on stories that's very interesting and my takes and opinions on these stories for entertainment and educational purposes let's get into it on this segment of what the news remember monkeypox well it's back and causing so much concern that the world health organization who has declared it a public health emergency for international concern they're calling it mpox now but don't let the name fool you because this time it's serious. This is the second time in just five years that the WHO has sounded the alarm on monkeypox. The first public health emergency was declared in July 2022, but it ended in May 2023 when cases started to decline. But the emergency declaration was still active till a couple days ago, which now a new strain has emerged and the WHO, WHO is sounding the alarm again to re-up the fear, maintain power, and massive funding. Dr. Tedros Adhanom Ghebreyes. I don't know. The director general of the WHO is not mincing words. The emergence of a new strain of MPOX is rapid spread in Eastern Democratic Republic Congo and the reporting of cases in several neighboring countries are very worrying, he said. With outbreaks of other MPOX strains happening in the DRC and other African countries, it's clear that we need a coordinated international response to stop these outbreaks and save lives. Today, the emergency committee met and advised me that in its view, the situation constitutes a public health emergency of international concern. I have accepted that advice. The detection and rapid spread of a new clade of mpox in eastern drc its detection in neighboring countries that had not previously reported mpox and the potential for further spread within africa and beyond is very worrying in addition to other outbreaks of other clades of mpox in other parts of africa it's clear that a coordinated international response is essential to stop these outbreaks and save lives Here's the deal. Mpox is mainly spreading through sexual networks. There is a vaccine, but it wasn't developed for this particular strain. The WHO is urgently calling for a new vaccine to be developed and submitted for emergency evaluation. Is it a real threat or a power grab? But before we surrender our freedoms, let's ask, is this legitimate or a play to reclaim pandemic powers? Monkeypox is not new. It's not airborne and the current outbreak is largely within a specific community. So why the panic? This decoration opens the doors for lockdowns, mandates, and calls for another vaccine. But mon monkeypox is not COVID. The comparison is flawed. We mustn't forget the lessons of the past four years. 
temporary emergency powers lingered and with civil liberties sacrifice we were told to trust the science yet they that science was often flawed this time we must be smarter we need transparency what's the true risk assessment what's the evidence behind the declaration and what are the targeted strategies with the least infringement on rights we can't let fear be wielded like a weapon again the public deserves a proportionate response not a breathtaking overreach of power let's learn from history lest we repeat it new zealand's recently updated pandemic plan is sending shock waves around the globe this plan which could serve as a blueprint for other nations includes chilling provisions that enable law enforcement and even nato to enforce the government's mandatory vaccination agenda the update was published on july 12th one just one week after the bill gates backed world health organization sparked outrage by suggesting that the u.s department of homeland security and department of justice should crack down on anti-vaxxers the WHO dispatched Dr. Peter Hotez to make this stunning recommendation, and he even floated the idea of deploying NATO against populations that resist vac vaccination, a concept that was once unimaginable but is now being normalized. The plan, a modification of the 2002 Civil Defense Emergency Management Act, grants officials extraordinary powers to override the law, during a declared epidemic or emergency these powers include detaining isolating or quarantining individuals locations vehicles and animals a stark reminder of the internment camps of history forcing people to undergo preventative treatments like vaccination with refusal potentially leading to detention raising serious questions about bodily autonomy authorizing police to use force to assist in enforcing these measures a provision that could lead to the intimidation and harm of those who resist this third point is particularly alarming as it opens the door to state sanctioned violence against those who resist the enforcement of these sweeping powers the speed of which these measures are being introduced and promoted by global health bodies is a warning sign for all who value freedom and consent. This pandemic plan is straight fire and not in a good way. Giving cops and even NATO the power to enforce people to get vaccinated is some dystopian nightmare crap. It's like, hello, I own my body and I get to decide what goes into it. That's not just some liberal buzzword. It's a basic human rights 101. We've seen this movie before and it doesn't end well. When governments get to act like dictators for our own good, things escalate fast. Next thing you know, people are getting hauled off to camps for refusing a shot. That ain't the solution to a health crisis. That's how you break a society. And don't even get me started on the culling the population that's not public health that's eugenics there's no pandemic bad enough to make it okay to start talking about sacrificing people like they're animals anyone who uses that kind of language needs to be kept far far away from power this whole plan reeks of not trusting people to make their own decisions newsflash we're the ones living through the pandemic not some bureaucrat in an office the best way to beat this thing is with straight talk, respect, and voluntary action. Not with police state tactics that's just gonna make everyone lose their minds. Hard no on this pandemic plan. Moving on, yo. VP Kamala Harris just dropped an econ plan that's straight fire for communists. She's all about price controls blaming corporations for inflation, but let's be real, it's the government's reckless spending. Looking at you, Kamala, Biden, Trump, that got prices sky high. It's like Econ 101. When you print more money, the value goes down and prices go up. Even the Washington Post is roasting her saying, don't get called a communist, then propose price controls. Elon Musk just shared a breakdown of how her plan would destroy the food industry. It's a 
whole thread, but too long to read right here. From Robert Sterling. Government caps grocery prices, stores in low-income areas close because they can't make ends meet. Food producers can't cover costs, so they stop making cheap stuff. Grocery stores start stocking random non-essential items. Small producers in stores get pushed out. Supply chains break and you get armed guards on food trucks. Government tries to run the food industry and it falls apart. It's like, hello, look at Stalin's USSR, Castro's Cuba, Maduro's Venezuela. Price control controls just bring shortages and inflation. Kamala's plan is a commie playbook. We can't let her turn America into a failed state. Econ freedom is where it's at, not government control fantasies. Her price controls are a hard pass. Think about it. when government sets prices too low, businesses can't make a profit, so they stop producing. And then there's nothing to buy. That's how you get red lines like Soviet Russia or people eating cat food like in Castro's Cuba. That's the future we, if we let Kamala bring that socialist shit to the White House. We need to keep it real, keep it a free market. Let businesses compete, let people decide what to buy. That's how you get innovation. That's how you get progress. Kamala's plan is just a recipe for disaster. We can't fall for that commie trap. America's got to stay free, stay strong. Kamala Harris's Proposed policies on housing assistance, child tax credits, and inflation are fundamentally flawed and would have damaging consequences for the economy. Providing $25,000 for down payments may help some buyers in short term, but it fails to address the root causes of, of unaffordable housing, such as restrictive zoning laws and a lack of supply. Similarly, expanding the tax credit Child tax credit would increase spending without incentivizing economic growth. Her approach to inflation is particularly concerning rather than addressing the root causes of inflation, which are often driven by excessive government spending and money printing. Harris proposes even more spending. The, this would only exacerbate the problem, devaluing people's savings and making goods more expensive. On energy, Harris's proposed ban on fracking would have devastating effects on the economy and national security. Fracking has made the U.S. energy independent, created jobs, and lowered energy costs. A ban would lead to job losses, increased dependence on foreign oil, and higher energy prices. Her stance on Second Amendment is also troubling. A ban on guns would infringe on law-abiding citizens, constitutional rights, and self-defense abilities. It would be the unenforceable and only serve to disarm lawful citizens, not criminals. Open border policies of the Biden administration are unsustainable and pose significant national security and economic risks. An unchecked influx of migrants would strain public resources, lead to increased competition for jobs, and potentially allow dangerous individuals to enter the country. While Harris's policies may sound appealing in theory, they would have serious negative consequences in practice. They fail to address root problems, infringe on rights, and threaten economic and national security. Voters should be wary of such misguided policies. Moving on, y'all. Robert Kiyosaki, a well-known financial expert who has correctly predicted the 2008 financial crisis, is warning that California's poor financial management and progressive policies could lead to economic disaster, not just for the state, but for the entire country. He points out that as a bellwether state, California trends often spread to other parts of the U.S., Kiyosaki argues that California's financial missteps, such as overly generous subsidies and excessive spending on programs for the poor, prisons, environmental initiatives, and teachers' unions are sustain unsustainable. As the state goes broke, it will be forced to raise taxes and cut these subsidies, leading to increased crime as police forces are reduced. This isn't just speculation. Business owners are already seeing a surge in crime and many are planning to leave the state. 
A recent survey found that 86% of California business owners have seen an increase in crime in their area, and 67% are considering relocating their headquarters out of California. Even high-profile entrepreneurs like Elon Musk are abandoning California. Musk recently announced that he is moving the headquarters of SpaceX and X, formerly Twitter, to Texas, citing California's laws as unaffordable for both families and companies. Kiyosaki sees Musk's departure as a major red flag. If one of the most successful business leaders in the world doesn't think California is a good place to do business, that's a bad sign for the state's economic future. You talk about in one of the latest oh. pieces that you wrote about California going broke and that it really could bring other states down with it. Talk us through it. Well, thank you. You know, I think it's interesting that one of the greatest entrepreneurs of our time, uh, Elon Musk, is leaving. What does that tell you? Mm. And then you look at the debt of the whole United States. We're the biggest debtor nation in the world. So, and then Japan just took a tank. So I look at all of this, I'm going, wow, what's gonna happen? So a bellwether is they're the lead state and people are leaving California yeah. and it's going bust. And we've got Vice President Kamala Harris running for president. She is from California. You've got Tim Walls from Minnesota, which is very California-like in policy, too. So you ask yourself, what does the future hold? And Robert, when I think of you, I think about your book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. It inspired a lot of people I know to start small businesses in this country. And I'm wondering, in the current state that we're in, do you still give people that advice? Is this still the greatest place on earth for entrepreneurism? Or is the tide turning? Or could it turn worse? if there is um, you know, someone at the, the, that wins this election that isn't pro-business? Well, Biden and Kamala are the gift that keeps giving, you know, in a bad way. And our unemployment is going through the roof right now. So the idea of just going back to school to get a job, I think is a bad idea. With AI coming along and all that, like in, in my neighborhood, Waymo is driving around and there's no driver in it. And I think 30% of the jobs in America are with drivers. So it's why not just start, start small, smart, you know, side hustle, they call it, start a small business and start to learn about being an entrepreneur. I think it's the safest thing you can do right now. That's incredible advice. I'm sure one that our audience will take to heart, Robert. Thank you so much. In short, Kiyosaki is warning that California's financial recklessness could have far-reaching consequences. If the state's trends spread to other parts of the country, it could lead to a national economic downturn. Business, own business owners are already feeling the effects of California's poor policies, and even major companies are starting to leave the state. Unless California gets its finances in orders, it could be facing a serious economic crisis. To avoid economic disaster, California needs to get its finances in order. This means reining in spending on unsustainable subsidies and programs. The state needs to prioritize its budget, focusing on essential, essential services like public safety and education, and cut back on non-essential spending. California also needs to create a more business-friendly environment. This means lowering taxes and reduce, reducing regulations that make it difficult for companies to operate in the state. By making it easier and more affordable to do business in California, the state can encourage companies to stay and even attract new ones. The state's leaders need to take a hard look at the policies that are driving businesses and residents away. This includes laws that are seen as unaffordable for families and companies. As Elon Musk put it, California needs to find a balance between its progressive values and the economic reality of running a state. On a national level, other states need to be aware of the trends coming out of California and avoid following in its missteps. Just because a policy is popular in California doesn't mean it will work elsewhere. States need to be cautious about adopting California-style progressive policies without considering the long-term financial consequences. California needs to take immediate action to address its financial mismanagement and create a more sustainable economic model. 
This includes cutting, cutting spending, lowering taxes, reducing regulations, and rethinking policies that are driving businesses away. If the state can get its finance, finances in order, it may be able to avoid economic disaster. But if not, the, trending, the trends coming out of California could have far-reaching consequences for the entire country. So I hope, I hope. Moving on. You don't got to be a conspiracy theorist to see why folks are freaking out about China's digital yuan. China's always been super into keeping tabs on its people. Think of it like this. The government can track every single transaction, see where all your money's going, and even shut off your funds if they don't like what they see. That's some next level control right there. They were already testing the waters with digital vouchers they sent out during COVID. These vouchers let the government see exactly how people are spending their money so they can decide where to direct their efforts. But once they've got the tools to track all this data, there's nothing stopping them and from using it to snoop on anyone for any reason. One researcher in China was stoked about how the digital one means the government will be able to trace every single transaction. That's a pretty terrifying thought, especially when you remember that this is a government that always been about the control and doesn't have the best track record when it comes to people's rights. Could never happen here. That's what folks always say right before something wild happens. People thought the Patriot Act was too crazy to pass that our bank info was safe and that the economy would never just shut down overnight compared to all that a digital currency doesn't seem so far-fetched in fact about 20 central banks are already working on their own versions and most of the big shots in the financial world seem to think digital currencies are the future the head of philadelphia Federal Reserve Bank thinks real-time digital payments are a done deal, and the head of the Bank of International Settlements thinks central banks will have to get in the games as soon as possible. During the COVID relief debates, one senator was pushing for stimulus payments to be sent through a digital dollar wallet with the Federal Reserve running the show. The EU's been pushing for a digital single market for years. Right now, there's no way to make payments that works across the whole EU, and the European Central Bank wants that to change. This is just the next step to the in the EU's plan to bring everything under one roof, and the timing couldn't be better. After the COVID mess, they could use financial integration as a way to keep everyone in line and push everyone into a digital economy that they control. The Fed's idea for a central bank digital currency, CBDC, is hella sketchy. It's like a digital cash, but way more dangerous. Here's why. They'd be watching your every move. With a CBDC, the government would know every time you spend a buck. It's not like they're doing it now. <laughs> it's like having a financial cop looking over your shoulder 24-7. They could block you from buying stuff they don't like, whether that's guns, video games, or supporting causes they hate. That's wild overreach and a threat to our freedom. It's bad news for regular banks. A CBDC would be super risky for regular banks. People might yank their cash out of those banks, which could mess with the whole financial system. The government could also use a CBDC to play favorites with who gets the money, which isn't, which isn't how the free market is supposed to work. It's like they're stacking the deck. Your money, but only if they say so. A CBDC could come with major strings attached. They could dictate how and where you spend your own, your own money. That might sound okay if it's to stop bad guys, but it's a slippery slope. Imagine if they froze your accounts or posting the wrong thing online or made you spend your cash only at approved stores that's messed up so what's the solution 
We need to get back to sound money. That means backing our currency with gold again. When our money was backed by gold, the government couldn't just print endless cash. It kept them honest and prevented wild inflation. We should explore a modern gold standard that limits the government's power to mess with our money. Second, the government needs to get its spending in check. They can't keep printing trillions of dollars and expecting no consequences. That's what's causing inflation to skyrocket. We need fiscal responsibility, not more government control over our finances. CBDC might seem convenient, but the risks are too real. We got to keep our money free. The Fed should chill with this idea and let private companies keep innovating. They can make digital payments cool without the government getting all up in our business. We got to stay woke. No, never mind. You got to stay awake and protect our rights. Money is too important to let the government get all controlling in our finances. But yep, yeah, that's the end of the show, guys. Appreciate y'all being here and staying informed with me. Again, hit that bell no notification for weekly what the news let culture speak tomorrow we'll be doing a show let culture speak where we talk about celebrities sports culture news uh joining me would be with jess <laughs> so can't wait for that uh look forward to doing that with her again appreciate y'all being here stay informed you guys question everything and don't take everything I say here. Go research it yourself. I've already been researching this for four years now. And it's terrifying. It's terrifying to see where our government's going. But I have hope. I have very much hopeful thinking about our country. People waking up, understanding what is going on. And we need to talk about it. And I'm talking about it. Hopefully you guys are talking about it amongst your your circles. You know, keep the conversation going. Let them know we know so it doesn't happen. There's possibilities that it could happen. But then again, if we keep talking about it, <clears throat> it won't happen. And that's the good thing about freedom of speech in America. If we talk about it, our our families in the future could thrive in this country, open businesses, have families, have kids, have an awesome life and not government overreach and control over our lives. Again, I'm very hopeful and I'm going to just put it out there, okay? This is going to be big for me. This channel is going to be big for me. I'm going to make a living off of this putting it out there manifesting my dreams you guys it's gonna be big okay so stay with me help me grow this channel like share and subscribe for more peace out